Welcome to the Inspired Creative, the podcast for people who need a little extra help getting inspired and staying motivated to explore their creative side. My name is Paula Castle and I would like to welcome you to the very first episode of this podcast. I am so excited to be exploring this topic and to be having this conversation. I cannot wait to get your feedback, to hear back from all of you who are listening to me for the first time, to hear what you have to say, to to know whether or not this resonates with you and I really hope that it does because when I was first considering what I wanted to talk about um, I couldn't come up with a better idea than the topic of creativity but before I get into all of that I want to start off every episode of this podcast with a quote because if we're talking about finding inspiration, I think most of us would agree that when we're looking for something inspiring, we go and we look at the words and the works and and the efforts of the people who've come before us, right? So the quote that I found that just seems perfect launching point for this entire conversation is by Arthur Ashe, who said, start where you are, use what you have, Do what you can. And the reason that I love this quote so much is that, to me at least, it speaks so powerfully about how important it is for us to give ourselves permission to begin something new. Because, like I said just a few minutes ago, when I first was looking for a conversation to have on this podcast, I was, I was throwing ideas around, I was playing with a whole bunch of topics in my mind, and I realized I needed to, to pick something that was important to me. I needed to pick something that I could speak about passionately and intelligently. I needed a topic that I could go on about ad nauseum, forever, and talk about in a million different ways with a million different people if I needed to. And I wanted it to be something that would resonate with other people because I didn't want to just start another podcast about movies or about music or, you know, reviewing the latest television shows. And don't get me wrong, I love those podcasts. But I didn't feel like I had anything to add to those conversations. And so when I really sat down and thought about where I can add value to other people's lives, what's going to bring people back to this podcast? Why are people going to want to listen to what I had to say? I realized that I'm a person who's in a slightly unique experience because I am surrounded every single day by people who are incredibly gifted, talented, creative people. I cannot tell you how many of my friends and people in my circle are successful, creative artists. They're dancers and singers and actors and musicians. It's just part of the world. I live in New York City, so of course, so many of the arts are centered here. So there are so many people who I know and love who are are actively pursuing creative careers, and that's amazing. But I also have friends and other people in these same circles, these same groups of friends who live what we might consider to be ordinary lives. And so many times I've sat down with these people and they've had conversations with me where they said, listen, Paula, it's intimidating to be in this creative atmosphere and to be with these artistic people because they'll ask me, oh, what do you do? And I'm just not a creative person. And that phrase, I'm just not a creative person, I've heard it, I can't tell you how many times, and it's really resonated with me because I think that that's a lie. I think that the truth of the matter is everyone is a creative person. Now, somehow, as a society, we have created this divide between creative people and non-creative people. And we have come up with this idea in our heads, and nobody says it out loud, and I don't think that this is done intentionally, but somehow we have developed this system where if you are artistic and talented and pursuing artistic and and, and talent-driven career paths and artistic and talent-driven passions and hobbies, that that makes you a creative person. And if you are not specifically artistic and you don't have what you would consider an artistic 
talent and you don't have any interest in pursuing a career in the arts, that that makes you not a creative person. But I think that everyone has in their human nature the need to be creative. I think we all have that drive to go out and to make the world a more beautiful place in one way or another. Now that might not always express itself in purely artistic forms, but that need to create and that drive to create is part of all of us. And I think it's so important that we as as a society, as a people, give ourselves the permission to explore that creative side of us. Now you may be sitting there thinking, Paula, you are making a mountain out of a molehill. You are turning this very small concept into a really big societal problem. And I understand what you're saying. I'll even agree with you because I don't think that our society is going to be fixed if we all suddenly start singing and dancing and, and, and doing decoupage. I do think that if we all get comfortable with our creative side and give ourselves permission to be creative people, that it's going to make a lot of our lives a lot happier. So as we're going into this new year, and for those of you who are listening in the future and are picking up this podcast later on, we are just starting 2019. And I think that at this time when we're starting over and so many people are making resolutions and so many people are making goals and so many people are, are trying to turn over a new leaf, one of the key things that we can do is make a promise to ourselves that we are going to give ourselves permission to get creative and to do things that maybe we've been scared to do before, to jump into the things that, that we've always said we can't do or we're, we're not good enough enough at and so we put them off and we've set them aside. I'm going to tell you a really silly stupid story, but it's my story, so I'm going to tell it. Um I am not a very graceful person. And in the world of things that I do not do very well, dance is right up at the top of that list. The other thing that is right up at the top of that list is any sort of physical exertion around other people. I'm a little bit clumsy. Um I've got two left feet. And I love to exercise. I love to go for a run. I'll go for a swim. I think all of that is great, but I prefer to do it on my own because I'm also super pasty pale. And as soon as I get even slightly exerted, uh, I turn bright pink, start going purple. It gets really ugly really fast is what I'm saying. I'm not a, I'm not a pretty sweater, right? So my entire life, anytime I had to do anything that was physically exerting, um, I do it alone. I was on swim teams when I was a kid. I ran when I was in college, but I always did it on my own or I always did it in a place where other people wouldn't see me. And I could never, ever, 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 ever feel comfortable on a dance floor, not to save a life. In fact, one of the best friends I ever had, uh, she's been friends with me since I was in high school. Her name is Rashada Nunez. She's probably going to be a guest on this show at some point. My wedding gift to her when she got married 10 years ago was that I agreed to do a dance at her wedding. And I did the chicken dance because it was funny um, and I didn't have to do it well. But uh, we had this struggle for years. She would try to get me out on the dance floor and I just wouldn't dance. And so about five years ago, someone who was very close to me, a very good friend of mine, uh, became a Zumba instructor. And that was great. I was so happy for her. Yay, she's off doing Zumba. And yay, she's, she's, she's off exploring this whole new thing that she's never done before. And she's super excited about it. She started a class and so many people were coming to her class. And she asked me, would you please come to my class? And I said, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Absolutely not. I'll support you any other way. I will tell other people about it. But the idea of me being in a room with other people and specifically choosing to do a combination of these two things that I do not do well just sounds horrifying. First of all, I'll probably fall over. Secondly, there's no way I'm going to pick up the moves. And thirdly, I'm going to be a big purple sweaty ball of disgustingness before we get to the third song. That's just not a good idea. It's not for me. And for weeks and weeks, people would tell me how much fun they had at her class and all of our friends were going and they're having a great time. And every time they asked me and every time they talked to me, I said, listen, that's just not something I do. And then one day someone said something to me that really provoked me. And I realized that I was being selfish. Uh, she, she was starting this off and she needed support and she was looking for some friendly faces in the class. And she has, you know, 
she's the type of person who would lay down her life for me if I asked her. And she was asking this one small thing and I wouldn't give it to her and I wouldn't give it to her. And I realized I was, I was doing it because I wasn't comfortable with it because I didn't think it was something I would do well. And it took a little bit of reflection and it took swallowing a little bit of pride. Um, but that next week I showed up at her class. And everybody who knew me, and there weren't a ton of people there who knew me, but the people who knew me were all shocked and in awe and, oh my God, I thought you would never come. Oh, you said you would never come. What happened to I don't dance? What happened to I don't like to exercise with other people? And I had to swallow a little bit of pride to show up and to be there to support her. But the funny thing is that as I was in this class, I actually had a lot of fun doing something I didn't think I was going to be able to do and doing something that I knew I wasn't going to be able to do well. And over the week, and over the months, I got more involved and I had a great time and I discovered this whole area of my life that I never expected I would be good at. And listen, to this day, I am not a good dancer. To this day, I will not get out on a dance floor voluntarily unless you pull me and pay me. But this whole aspect of my life that I was frankly afraid to try because I was not a quote unquote dancing person. I did not have the skill or the grace to, to pull it off nicely. When I actually got out there and tried it, I realized I was going to have a lot of fun with it. And it it improved my life so much and it got me back into fitness at a time when I really needed to get back into fitness. And it was just, it was a launching pad and really a wake up call for me that just because we think we can't do things doesn't mean we shouldn't try, right? So in this new year, as you're starting off everything from scratch, I want you to sit back and think and say, what is it that I can do now that I've never done before? Maybe I've been a little scared of it. Maybe it's a little intimidating. Maybe it's outside of the things that I've, I've done in the past. I don't know if I'll be any good at it. What can I start doing now to express my creativity, to explore my artistic side maybe, or to, to do something that's outside of the realm of what I'm used to doing? What's that one thing I've always wanted to do and never tried? Or what's that one thing that people have always told me I'd be really good at doing, but I've just never seen myself as being able to do it? What's that one thing that's always been wiggling in the back of my head that, that I probably could do, but it's, it's not in my comfort zone, so I haven't really given it a go? And let's make this the year where we start it. Let's make this the year where we just dive into something new, something that we've never tried before, something that is outside of our comfort zone, and something that gives us a chance to become more and to do more than we've ever done. I think that that is the perfect place to start a conversation about creativity. And listen, I don't know what that means for you. For some of you, that might mean that you're going to take up sewing classes. For some of you, that might mean that you're going to buy those paints and that easel that you talked about. Some of you might start taking singing lessons and you don't even have to start with classes and lessons. This might be something you teach yourself. For me, I have to admit that the one thing that I was a little scared to do this year that I'm so glad that I'm finally diving into is this podcast because the idea of having to put myself out there like this is a little intimidating, but it's an opportunity that I relish because it's a chance to go out and to explore something that I've never done before, to learn things that I don't know how to do, and to allow myself the freedom to be a little creative and a little outside of my own box. And I really think that if, if we're willing to take the time and we're willing to say, all right, this year I'm going to do something different, not just I'm going to, you know, the resolutions everybody says, we're going to drink less, we're going to exercise more, we're, you know, we're going to spend more time with our family, we're going to organize our life. And those things are all really important. But when we give ourselves the intentional permission to dive into a creative pursuit and really just let it happen and see how far we can take it and see what happens when we explore the things that, that we're passionate about, then I think that we come away from that, even if we're not wildly successful, best-selling authors at the end of the year. And even if we're not in a place where all of a sudden our art is hung up in, in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, I mean, that would be wonderful. But even if our goals and our ambitions are a little more modest, and even if our successes are a little more personal, if we walk away having made something that wasn't there before, explored an area of our life that we hadn't tapped into before, built a skill 
that we didn't have before, I would say that that would make this year in many ways a success. And you know, the best part about all of this is that we don't have to wait to get started. We can begin today. And that brings us right back to the quote that we started this whole episode with. Arthur Ashe said, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. You don't have to have all of your ducks in a row to begin. You don't have to have years of experience to get started. All you need is a little inspiration, one idea and a desire to go out and get a little creative and you can begin today to really develop a creative area of your life from the ground up. So I really want to encourage you, don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until next week or next month or the summer when the kids are out of school or that perfect time that never comes. If you'll begin your creative process today, if you'll start today to actively look for inspiration inspiration and actively set aside time to develop your creative side. Who knows where that will take you by the end of the year? And listen, you don't have to do this on your own. I want to be there with you as you're going on this journey. And so this podcast is going to be an exploration every week of the topics that come up when we're trying new things and we're moving in new creative directions. So we're going to be talking about things like where do you find your inspiration and how do you build on an idea and how do you learn a new skill and what do you do when you get stuck and and how do you refine your focus and how do you pick up that project that you put down six months ago and get re-inspired to finish what you started. All of these things and more are all going to be covered in these upcoming weeks in this podcast. We're going to have weekly episodes available. And my hope and my plan is that as we go on, we're going to be talking with other people because like I said, I am surrounded by incredibly successful creative artists in my day-to-day life. And I don't think that there's any better source of inspiration than talking to people who have an ability to tap into their creative side on a daily basis. So I'm going to be having different guests on the show every episode. They're going to be talking to you about about the things that inspire them and the ways that they fuel their creativity and how important creativity is in their life. They'll share their own stories, their own anecdotes. And listen, some of these guests are going to be people who have made it so to speak. They're going to be people who have their professional careers laid out before them. Some of them are going to be people like me and maybe people like you who either haven't found their footing in their creative field yet or aren't really interested in building a creative career, but in just finding new creative outlets. So no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing this year, whether you are starting off small or whether you're you're gearing up for a new push in a big direction. I want to be that weekly source of inspiration, that weekly little nudge to get out and go and do something great with your life and not to let a day or a week go by without tapping into your creative gifts and discovering something new about yourself. But I'll be really honest with you. One thing that I don't want is I don't want this to be a one-way conversation. I don't want it to be me talking into the void. I want to hear back from you. I'd love to get your feedback. I'd love to get your comments. I want to know what you're working on and what you find inspiring and, and what pushes you to be creative and what you're going to do that's new this year. And there's so many ways that you can get in touch with me. If you want to follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I'm going to be putting up the inspirational quotes that inspire each of these podcast episodes up there every week. And we'll be having conversations there. You can find me on Instagram and on Facebook at The Inspired Creative Pod. We're there doing all sorts of wonderful, amazing things. I'd love for you to be a part of the community there. If you want to email me, please email me at theinspiredcreativepod at gmail.com. Email me your questions. Email me your thoughts. If you write me a letter, I might end up reading 
reading it here on the podcast. You never know. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to start this conversation going. I'd love to know what, what inspires you and, and what you want to hear and what you want to be able to get out of this podcast as well, because this is a two-way street. And please, if you want to help and you want to get the word out, the best thing that you can do besides subscribing, obviously, and listening every week, of course, I want you to be back with us every single week. But leave us a review wherever you are. If you're on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to this podcast, leave a review, leave a comment so that other people can find it. It helps in the algorithm so other people will find it in their searches and it it helps to spread the word. And feel free to share it with a friend. If you know a friend who's getting involved in creative endeavors, if you know somebody who needs a little inspiration, feel free to send the podcast their way. Introduce them to me. I'd love to meet them. Uh, But please help spread the word. We'd love to have that help, that support. But honestly, more than anything, I want you to go out and have an amazing, inspired creative week go out and do something new go and explore your creative side and let's make this world a better place